Thank you. Early on in school, we're taught that there's a, an ecological role or a niche for each species. And, uh, and then, let's give an example of that. Here's obviously our, our ruby-throated hummingbird, the only hummingbird that we have in Ohio, that nest in Ohio. And it has a real important role. It took me about 20 years to get this picture. Um, <laughs> it, it's the only known pollinator of cardinal flower. And look how its head perfectly conforms to the contour of the reproductive parts of that flower. Really neat. So this, this animal has an obvious role in nature. We, we sometimes interact, um, we hunt, we fish. Photography is exploding in popularity, especially wildlife photography. <laughs> yeah, so we, 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 we try and help wildlife in different ways. This is an owl that was um, uh, nesting in a roost box that somebody made, and this nest box has been used un uninterruptedly for 20 years by this little screech owl. If you ever in your neighborhood walking around and you at night, you hear something going, oh, oh, it's probably one of these screech owls. They're all through the city, neat little animals. The bumblebee has an incredible role to play in nature. It is the only known pollinator of um, gentian. And this particular gentian, when I took this picture, was the only one of its kind, the only one of its species in Ohio. One left, one plant left in Ohio when I took this picture. Since then, we found another plant. But that's how rare some of the, these species have gotten. And Lucas County has more rare plants and animals than any other county in the state, over 150. Another bumblebee pollinated plant, the fringe gentian. Nature brings quite a bit of money into the area in ways you may not think. Bird watching. In the springs, thousands of people converged in northwest Ohio to see one of the best bird migrations anywhere in the world. Uh, we used to, you'll see license plates and talk to people from uh, Kentucky, New York, Ontario. Uh, photo groups come from California and Oregon to, to photograph uh, of the birds that stop over here. And some of the nests here, like this large sparrow, which is the rarest nesting songbird in the state of Ohio, in its stronghold, its oak openings preserve, Metro Park. The, the gay wing is a, is a plant. We, we also talk, when we talk about wildlife, we always just kind of get into the animal part of it. We kind of forget our friends, the plants. Uh, some plants are extremely rare, like this, like this gay wing. It's only found in one place in the whole state of Ohio, and that's at Oak Openings, in an area about the size of a card table. And we have some cool wiggly things like blue spot and salamanders. You know, what's, when we think about humans, you open the, the newspaper or magazines, watch the news, it's almost always bad news when it comes to people interacting with nature. You know, we're, we're spilling oil somewhere, or we're poaching something somewhere. But I've got a whole different story to tell in that there's a lot of people here in northwest of Ohio that are working very hard to maintain the natural ecosystems that this, these plants and animals live in that I'm showing you today. This is a junior high group from a local school that's out removing uh, invasive and overabundant species for some of the, to help out some of the endangered species that um, need more sunlight. We have, we have uh, skilled practitioners that do prescribed fires that, uh, that, that will burn these areas after they're cleared. And while all they're doing here is duplicating what the Native Americans had done for millennia before uh, European contact. And the result is a beautiful tall grass prairie. This is Campbell Prairie out of Oak Openings, arguably one of the most diverse areas in the state of Ohio. Drop dead gorgeous, go out there, look around, it's beautiful. Fernley Falls Foxglove, say that fast, <laughs> a, a savanna species. It's, it's known, one way you identify this plant is by touching it, it has really sticky leaves. So you kind of, it doesn't want to get away from it. Savannas, where wild lupin is found. 
We have uh, wet prairies in, in Northwest Ohio, one of the rarest habitat types there is. That's right down Door Street, by the way, that particular prairie, or Bancroft. Carter blue butterfly, federally endangered butterfly, uh, that depends on those kids clearing the land. So wild lupin, this plant that the, that the butterfly's on, that's what its caterpillar has to eat. Monarch butterflies have to have milkweed. Carter blue butterflies have to have lupin. Carter blues, some lupin. And, and lupin is only pollinated by bumblebees. Bumblebees depend on mouse burrows to, to, to nest in. Without the, without, the, without the mice, you wouldn't have the bumblebees. M mice depend on blueberries and acorns to live on for food. And it's not the squirrels that spread the acorns. They spread them, but they chew the reproductive parts off before they bury the nut. It's the blue jays. They're responsible for dispersing the seeds of the, of the oak tree, the acorn. So you have a circle of life here. What's missing, though, from this picture is us, humans. Humans are really important in maintaining the ecological balance here. So I want to leave you with some good news in that there are a lot of different species that fulfill roles in nature, but we have one to fulfill too, and that role can be very fulfilling. Thank you.